I have a group of friends, for example, that live in the East Coast, like in the Washington, D.C. area. They convinced me to try um, triathlons. Now, again, you have to remember, never exercised in my life. I, I know how to get from point A to point B in the water, but by no means would I say I know how to swim. Um, and I knew how to ride the Peloton, but I'd never ridden an outdoor bike uh, and I'd never run more than a mile. So they convinced me to sign up for a relay for the Atlantic City Half Ironman. Never met these people in my life. I travel all the way across the country to from Missouri to Atlantic City uh, to run for 13 miles after I had trained for like six months. That's the kind of thing that the Peloton community does. And that is life changing. That led to what can I do in my personal life? I love this. I wanna exercise all the time. I want other people to feel the way I do. We believe that you are strong by design and you were made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. You're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world. So let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. Hello and welcome to the Strong by Design podcast show hosting today, Coach Chris Wilson. So happy you've joined us today. If you're a first time listener, just found the Strong by Design podcast. Uh, Thank you so much. And uh, we are, um, you know, in for another terrific conversation with a fitness enthusiast, somebody that uh, I have a lot of similarity with because uh, I don't just do fitness. I have been in the fitness industry my entire life, fitness and health industry. Uh, And it's I'm really kind of like living out my passion. It's something that we were talking about before I hit record about really finding your purpose in what you're doing in in life. And that can happen at any point in your life. Uh, Some people are lucky enough to find that point in their early years, in their 20s and 30s. And other people, it happens a little bit later in life and they have to kind of go through the grind of life until they can find something that they're what their calling is, if you will. And so uh, uh, th- today's conversation, I think, will be a lot of fun uh, talking that out with our very special guest. If you're a, a past listener of the show, uh, you know what you're in store for. We love to get into uh, these great stories with our guests because um, we all have a story to tell. And all these stories are a little bit different. But there's a lot of overlap and a lot of similarities in, in these wonderful journeys uh, in life. And so I think uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be able to get, our, uh, get to know our guests a little bit better today as, as well as you. And we'll be able to uh, take some of these great nuggets and apply these to our own life, to live a life that is truly strong by design. As I've said in past episodes, the name of our show is a very uh, appropriate name. In fact, it has a double meaning. We are strong by design, by the way we are designed by our creator. We're not just here randomly. Uh, we are, we are uh, beautifully and specially designed, but we also are strong by the way we design our life, by the actions that we take and our choices that, w- that we are making every single day. And we can choose to live a life that is strong by design uh, if we so desire. But it is a conscious choice that's made every single day. Um, if you will, at any point in this podcast, be sure to leave us a, uh, a quick five-star rating, if you would, or at the end of this episode, if you would leave us a review, we'd greatly appreciate it. And um, as I will be doing in, uh, potentially in this episode, if not in future episodes, I love to go in and read past uh, reviews because I think it's really fun to share what people are saying about our show, and uh, people love to hear uh, what they uh, what they have to say uh, when it when when the host of the podcast r- reveals it or reads it uh, organically in an episode. So that's a lot of fun to do sometimes, um, and because we so appreciate this, we're trying to reach obviously as many people as we can with this podcast. But just that feedback from one person means so much, and uh, we we greatly appreciate uh, what you have to tell us. So thank you so much. So our guest today, Crystal O'Keefe is a uh, former corporate America employee turned 
Peloton extraordinaire, fitness enthusiast, right? She's a certified personal trainer, a nutrition coach, and competitive athlete, inspiring others to do the same. And this is something, uh, as I was alluding to early, uh, earlier in the introduction, that this is something that happened a little bit later in her life. It wasn't something that she just landed on right out of college. And she was kind of in the grind of, of life in the, in the working world. And I would like to start there, Crystal, if you wouldn't mind. First of all, welcome to Strong by Design. <laughs> and I really want to get to know you a little bit better, if you would, by sharing uh, a little bit of, of your past, uh, of what you were doing in this world uh, some years back. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Um, as far as what I was doing, um, I was a project manager for IT, and, and I had done all kinds of project management for a robotics company, for um, a company that uh, is a well-known company that you hear out there for cable provider and cell phone provider and uh just things like that. And so it kind of caught me off guard as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so sometimes, sometimes the best things in life uh, take us by, uh, by surprise and, you know, you're not expecting it. And you just land on something that you say, wow, that, that was amazing. I want more of that in my life. Right. And Absolutely. a lot of us aren't getting that in our day to day. Uh, our our Mondays are dreaded, and I, I've said in, in 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 actually some recent episodes that you know if we're living that type of life where Monday is like a woe is me moment every week, then you really have to kind of take some some action in your life. It is what is kind of like my my own little. Um, my own little uh, wish, I guess you could say, or hope for anyone listening right now is to be able to find, really do some soul searching and find that thing in your life that does give you um, that joy and that purpose. And you feel like, okay, now this is my calling in life, you know? And that happened for you just a few years back. You're doing something yeah. completely different than what you were doing. Absolutely. Um I agree with you. And it can be tough, right? Because uh, the the you get kind of hooked into, oh, well, now I've made a certain amount of money and my family depends on this X amount of money. And um, you want to start all the way over in a career field. It's it's you're not necessarily going to be bringing in that same amount of money. So it, it can be really tough. And um, when I first found Peloton, if you go back to 2016, I had been, so I was in my late 30s and never worked out a regular basis at all. Um, there had been times that I had enjoyed working out, but uh, it was always a means to an end to lose weight. I've been overweight my entire life. I've always struggled with it. And um, so I thought, well, I want to get back to taking spin classes because I always enjoyed that. I really enjoyed the energy of the spin class. So I was looking around trying to find a local place that I could take spin classes again, but on my schedule. But now I was a, a mom. I had three kids at home. Um, I had just gotten remarried. So we had we were kind of integrating two different households together. And that can be its own stress. And um, it was very busy. So really, the only time I could work out was five o'clock in the morning. And I could not find spin classes that would work for me. So uh, I, as I was searching, I happened upon um, a Facebook ad because, of course, they were listening. And uh, Peloton came up. And I was like, what is this magic piece of equipment that I can take an in-studio class at home? Um, and I was very skeptical, but I was also instantly excited. Um, my husband was a little more guarded than I was, um, probably because I had an elliptical that had been sitting there unused for about four yeah. years. So right. uh, he kind of raised an eyebrow at me, but uh, he was like, hey, if that's what you want to do, you know, I support you, but uh, very skeptical. So eventually we got the the bike and I could not stop talking about it. It was amazing because this, this instructor is on this tablet right in front of you. So you feel completely immersed. Now, if you go back to 2016, uh, Peloton was fairly new to the scene nobody had heard of being able to do what what now everyone calls connected fitness. But back then, nobody had heard of it. Here in the Midwest, because I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, um, there were no Peloton stores. There were no Peloton ads on TV. 
it was before all of that. So sight unseen, I buy this very expensive bike, bring it home, love it instantly. I can't stop taking rides. It's like, even when I'm exhausted, I must take another ride because I'm having so much fun. But then I find that there is this Facebook group and this Facebook group is full of all these people who are enjoying it just as much as I am. But there was something that I had never experienced for, before, and that was finding all of these people who kept getting on the bike. And they had, quote unquote, real problems. Like, I, I, I mean, I would find people who they had special needs children, and they found time to get on the bike. They had uh, cancer. They were in the middle of chemo. They got on the bike. And so I started realizing that my issue <laughs> with not being able to lose weight was not being consistent. And I had excuses. I had been making excuses for myself. And so these people really motivated me. Um, I, I have learned so much from so many people, but that's where it all started. <laughs> wow, that's terrific. Yeah. And it's, it's great because I can think back to, I mean, years ago when my, 20 years ago when my wife and I had first met and... I was working at a fitness center, and I remember how um, much we enjoyed going to spin classes together yeah. at early morning. This is long before we had children, so it was a very kind of selfish time in our relationship where we could just do what we wanted when we wanted. Absolutely. And a lot of people, yeah, and a lot, of, and that's great. You know, when you're younger, you can get away with that, and. But then your schedule kind of changes once you have kids and and maybe uh, the the career that you have uh, eats up a lot of time and you it's a commitment you know but I still remember how exciting it was to have an instructor that really got you energized and and then I remember years later I was a, a general manager at a, a really nice tennis and fitness center in Punta Gorda Florida. I was a GM there for several years, and I, I had a great relationship with all the instructors. I and mean, we were doing like 60-plus classes a week at this wow. facility, and several of those classes were spin classes. And I used to love just going up randomly and joining a class uh, <laughs> because I loved a particular instructor and doing spin. So I, I've never experienced the Peloton, ex you know, gone through that myself, but I – I have done a lot of class, uh, in-person class instruction on, on a spin bike and always found it just push it, pushing you very, very hard, um, a terrific workout, a terrific amount of calories burned, um, and always a little bit different and fun. And also based on the, the people that you were in class with, you know, kind of uh, made it uh, feel a little bit different. So, uh, this fascination, this fascination that you have with Peloton, yeah, it it kind of erupted into this like you were like everything kind of changed at this point, right? This is kind everything. of like you were you were <laughs> wanting to like drop everything else that you were doing in life and just to kind of devote everything to this. So yes. let's talk about that a little bit more, like how the 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 planning that went into this and and what you were really considering walking away from what your career was at the, at that time and making this massive transition uh, later in, in life? Sure. So about six months after I got the bike, um, I was I was talking to my husband about how I wish that I had something. I mean, my job, that corporate job you spoke of, that, that IT, it's not exactly fun. It's not a very creative outlet. Um, and uh, I was looking for something to kind of let off some steam. And he was like, well, you should start a podcast. Now you have to understand he has a radio background. He's incredibly funny. And uh, he really just enjoys kind of being in, in attention. Like he loves having people pay attention to him and hear what he has to say. I am the exact opposite. I have always been introverted, quiet, serious. Um, and so I, when he mentioned that, I was couldn't even imagine what on earth I would possibly create a podcast about. And uh, when he mentioned Peloton, because I would not shut up about it, it seemed pretty obvious when he put it that way. Um, I, the planning that went into it wasn't actually planning. I feel like it kind of came to me. I feel like over time it evolved. We started this podcast in 2017 called the clip out all about peloton and i know that sounds incredibly boring by the way like what on earth could you talk about an exercise bike for 45 minutes to an hour every week um but they had all these instructors and i wanted to hear i loved 
seeing like these instructors just motivated me so much. Um, Robin Arzan, uh, for example, she started off as an attorney and um, she ended up being held at gunpoint at one point in her life. And the trauma from that, she almost died, made her start running. She had never been an exercise person. That led to her changing her career from being a corporate attorney in New York City to becoming a fitness instructor. And she talked about that openly on the bike. And all these other instructors had similar ambitions, similar life stories. And it was so inspiring to hear. Um, so I started kind of thinking about, wow, what if what if I could do something like that? Is there a way for me to do that? So we started having the podcast. We did that for a while. Um, eventually, it just kept growing because people wanted to hear what's going on with the instructors, what's going on with the company. They've had we, we watch them grow. We watch them do an IPO. We watch them add all these instructors on new equipment. Um, we've also watched this year as the stock has kind of gone the other direction. It's, it's gone down and there's now there's a new CEO. We report on all of that. We report they're up to 54 instructors. They started with 12. Um, and it's, it's all of that is kind of now become beside the point. But everybody that I talk to in the community is the point. I have these wonderful communications, these wonderful conversations and relationships with people all over the country. And it, it has just turned into everything. Like, how, how do you move to the next level? I have a group of friends, for example, that live in the East Coast, like in the Washington, D.C. area. They convinced me to try um, triathlons. Now, again, you have to remember, never exercised in my life. I, I know how to get from point A to point B in the water, but by no means would I say I know how to swim. Um, and I knew how to ride the Peloton, but I'd never ridden an outdoor bike uh, and I'd never run more than a mile. So they convinced me to sign up for a relay for the Atlantic City Half Ironman. Never met these people in my life. I travel all the way across the country to from Missouri to Atlantic City, sight unseen, uh, to run for 13 miles after I had trained for like six months. Um, that's the kind of thing that the Peloton community does. And that is life changing. I became curious, what else, ca what else am I capable of? What else can my body do? Um, I have now been in, I've tried duathlons. Um, I have now done multiple times where I've ridden outside 50, 40, 50 miles at a time. Uh, I have in my basement on my Peloton, done an entire marathon on my, my Peloton uh, treadmill. I have done 70 miles on my bike at one time, just constantly trying to figure out what can I do. And that, that led to what can I do in my personal life? I love this. I want to exercise all the time. I want other people to feel the way I do. And uh, I, it's just, it keeps growing. It keeps, in, it keeps kind of evolving into a new thing. Yeah, that's wonderful because that's something that you have to experience. Uh, you you can tell people all the time, you know, you know, when you move the body, it that's what moves your mind, and and the two are so so strongly connected. But you become an action taker in other areas of your life when you start to take control of just that one area of your physical life. I feel like, and so many people are you know they're they're scared or or you know they they don't like change or they oh that's not for me i don't think that's um, i i really can do that but here's somebody like you that some years back wasn't competing in any kind of you know activity um you you get a bike that you're able to use in the comfort of your own home it inspires you to do more and to see what more your body can handle and before you know it you're competing in live events, doing things with other people and, and surrounded in a, by a community now where you're, you're forming relationships with other people that are experiencing the same things as you. And it just is this huge momentum thing. It just starts with a very small snowball. And as it just rolls down that mountain, it's just growing bigger and bigger and evolving, as you said, into all. And you don't know where it can take you. And I think that's the excitement of it, right? Absolutely. Um, that, that every anybody can experience this. Anybody who is sitting at home contemplating, oh, you know, I wish I was, you know, more physically active, or I wish I was part of 
something, a group of some kind. Well, they're they're out there. There's a lot of opportunity for people if they just get going, if they yes. just take step number one. Going outside your comfort zone in any area is so important. Um, I never realized that when I was younger. You know, I, I used to I used to hear people talk about it, and I remember hearing that a million times in corporate America. You need to grow. You need to be uncomfortable. But I didn't really understand what that meant. And now um, I feel like I feel like working out has made me comfortable with being uncomfortable because if you can sit there and run, I don't care. I'm slow by the way, but if you can, if you can run for two or three hours at a time, it, it, that is mental strength. That is being uncomfortable, regardless of how good you are at it. It takes, it takes mental strength and it takes being comfortable with being in your own head and being uncomfortable and just doing that a little bit each day, just, just trying something new. Um, you'd be surprised at the things that you can do when you do that. Oh, without question, without question. It does. I, I tell everybody just start small. I think we all see the end and we and we look at where someone's at and we go, oh, I, that can never be me. But it's like, no, that's not where they started. Right. You're just seeing the the the, the culmination of 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 years or hard work and practice and like we got to go back to to the beginning. Everybody had to start somewhere. And yes. That start might that might that might be a five or ten minute bike ride. It might be a five or ten minute walk outside. But then when you build on that. And you have, and you celebrate your little wins and your little victories, and you stack them on top of each other. And before you know it, you're going out and you're walking five, ten miles, or you're out there jogging in a half marathon. And then, oh my gosh, look what this, you know. And th th that might be a six month to a year process, but you know, today can be day one of that process. And and that's, I think, the most important thing is just to get going, get started on something. Absolutely. And, um, and don't, don't don't run from it. Um, so, well, I was fascinated by something that you shared uh, a little bit before. I didn't realize that with the Peloton experience that you're really getting some personal information from these coaches on the bikes, that you're kind of getting to know these people. They're not just sitting on the bike and taking you through a class. You feel like you're forming like an, um, a bond with these people and you're getting Absolutely. to know them through this. Yeah. Absolutely. Like they share like – um. An, an instructor I just took a run with this morning, uh, she she is pregnant right now. So um, and I don't really know how old she is. And the only reason I mentioned that is because she's not like super young. She's not like in her 20s. You know, um, she's had a little bit of life behind her and uh, she's in a phenomenal, very fast runner. I, I know that she almost she like was like two or three minutes behind becoming like a qualifier for the Olympics. That's how like fast she is. Oh She's God. really fast. And uh, yeah. she was talking today about like how hard it's been to uh, make her brain catch up with where her body is being pregnant. You know, she's like, I'm so used to being able to do whatever I want, like workout wise. And like, I have to really listen to my body. And sometimes it's hard for me to hold back all of this while she's like completely outrunning me in the middle of a hit run, by the way. But like you, you get these personal anecdotes and they tell you, Oh, I just got a new dog or I got a new boyfriend. And you hear all these things that they go through. And then of course they post on social media too. So, you know, you have both of those things right. happening. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So you can kind of get to know these people and follow them uh, in their life outside of just that workout experience, which is, is kind of neat because that's what people are. I think that, you know, being a face to face coach as I was for so many years of my life, and I've been online now for almost 10 years, but for 15 years from the late nineties to the you know 2013 range, I was working face to face with people. And, uh, that's, it wasn't just cut. They weren't coming to me just for a, a good workout. There was a friendship there. There was, you know, a, a, an intimate kind of connection there. Yeah, you can and tell when they're having a bad that. day. You can tell when they were having a good that's day. Right. Yeah, it's absolutely that's like right. that. Wow, that's awesome. So, so for for the new for the novice for the beginner <laughs> who's never participated in anything like this before, tell us about how this works uh, in terms of finding the the coach that's best suited for you or, or or you know or just do you just try somebody out kind of randomly and see how you like it and then you can kind of go from there so there's a few different ways that i recommend uh, that you find your first person that you want to take a class with but 
But let me say, before I say anything else, I definitely recommend that you try taking a class with all of the instructors because um, there's a ton of them. And um, if you if you just like go by how somebody looks similar to anything in life, right? You just like, oh, I don't like that person based on whatever, or I really like this person based on whatever. Um, that may not that may not be true. And so I definitely recommend that you take a class, even if it's just a very short one, and get a sense of their actual personality. Um, and then uh, as far as how to try out your very first class, my my preference is to literally just take the first class on the schedule, the next live class. That's that's how I was. Way back in 2016, I could not wait to get on a live class. That was my exciting moment. Um, other people really like their music driven, um, especially from a class that they they want to take a spin class. It's always you know very heavily moved by music, and so they will scour playlists to find okay, this is the instructor that plays R and B that I really like, or hip hop, or this is this, they always play pop songs, so I'm going to go with this. And you can do that too. Uh, that's a really great way to try out different instructors. Um, one of my favorite ways to try out Peloton instructors in particular is they used to have these rides they always did over 4th of July um, that were called all for one rides. And they would take all of the instructors because remember, they only had 12 and 16 and 20 at the time. And everybody would take a turn up on the bike in one class and they would have like two two instructors up there at a time and they would chat and banter and then they'd do a song and then they, the next two would hop on. Um, and it was a really good way to like get these like little snack size bites of each person's um, kind of how they work on the bike. But then when they started adding in the tread and now Pilates and bar and yoga, there's so many different things. So if you when you start, the first thing is just what do you want to start with? Do you want to start with strength? Do you want to start with the bike? Do you want to start on the treadmill? And then just just pick an instructor and try them and keep trying because you also might really gel with an instructor on the bike and not so much on the treadmill or vice versa. It's really funny. Um, going back to my Robin Arzan comment, I don't actually like to ride the bike with her. She is tough on the bike, but I love running with her. She's a completely different instructor on the, on the treadmill. And I cannot even pinpoint or convey to you why that is. It just is. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So, that was my next question was, you know, it's not all just about the bike. Now, obviously, that's where it started, yeah. right? Peloton started with the bike experience, the, the virtual spin class, if you will, experience. But it's it's obviously evolved into more options, more ways of, of training. So, so what does that look like? Is there, like, if you wanted to kind of give a kind of an overview of, all there is uh, as an option for people. What, what does that look like right now? Sure. So it, it, one thing that I feel like a lot of people may not know is you don't necessarily have to have Peloton equipment to take Peloton classes. So in, I started with the Peloton bike, which automatically you get access to their membership and you you get to do all of their bike classes. But if um, if you had a different bike, you could still like use an iPad or put it on your TV um, and you could take a class, a Peloton class. But to answer your actual question of what all does it involve, we've got we've got any kind of spin class that you can think of, uh, any kind of running, hiking, walking class. Um, they have um, Pilates, they have bar, they have dance cardio. They have yoga, and they also have all kinds of strength classes. So uh, it's, it's mostly for people that are using free weights, but they also have some classes for that use bands, and they have a lot of classes that do body weight if you don't have any free weights. Um, so they have a, a new... They also have a new product they came out with this year called The Guide, and it like hooks up to your television and has a camera on you so you can do your strength while you're watching yourself on the TV next to the instructor so you can see what your form looks like and be able to say, oh, I'm not getting deep enough on that squat or I'm going too fast on bicep curls or I'm leaning back when I do bicep curls, things like that. Wow. Terrific. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So you're not limited. It's not one dimensional. No. It's really kind of a little bit of everything. And uh, I like the fact that, yeah, I mean, if you don't want to invest right out of the gate with a, you know, kind of a, a high quality, expensive bike experience you there are other options out there and then it's just about kind of joining the peloton community right to 
have the on your iPad or whatever, whatever, and then whatever bike you're on, you're on. Exactly. Uh, for, for for that for that ride, I was telling you before we started recording that my wife has. Oh, it's Bowflex ah, that yeah, she has. Yeah. My wife has a. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of other good brands and companies out there. She has an awesome Bowflex bike, and that was a Christmas present, and she absolutely loves it. And it's a really nice, heavy duty piece of equipment and it kind of like tilts from one side to the other and and you know have a nice big screen and um i remember these years ago as i said when i was a a gm at a uh, a fitness uh and tennis center they had a couple of these virtual bikes this is obviously long time before this is like 10 years before peloton It is yes, the espresso bikes. You remember, I do, right? Yes. And you would get these. You would gr- get these great, like, uh, video game looking, like, you know, vir- virtual like courses. And then you would pick like the mountains or the coast or whatever. And you were and you were getting to see like your speed and how fast you were r- riding the course. And 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 it would log all of your rides. And you could kind of see, am I riding better than I was last week or whatever? And and. It, and people absolutely love those bikes. Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, I didn't even think to mention that, but that's one of the things I love about Peloton is you have all of your data in front of you. And I, I am such a data nerd. I mean, it's obviously the side of me that loves being a product. I was, I really enjoyed being a project manager and having my spreadsheets and all the things. And yeah. uh, so being able to kind of dig into the data and being like, oh, how many average watts did I do last year compared to this year? I mean, I totally nerd out on that kind of thing. And I love that you can see that information because it's, to me, it's not about me versus somebody else. It's me versus me. So being able to see on this same bike compared to last year, doing the same kinds of classes, how am I doing? And I love being able to see growth in that way. It's very exciting and motivating to me. Oh, without question. And that I, I think all of us have a little bit of that competitive spirit and you're just competing against yourself ultimately. And I, yeah, I think that's, a, that's what makes it kind of fun is like, oh, can I beat my, my numbers from, from that last ride or, or look at how much better I am, you know, three months later, six months later. And uh, yeah, it's, it's fun to go back and look at that, the data, you know, and I'm not even like one of these people that like geeks out <laughs> too much on that stuff, but it, it's still interesting to me. I, I still find it like really cool and fascinating. Yeah. And those old espresso bikes, we only had a couple of them at that, at my, that facility, but I remember people would be like bummed if they'd like show up and like <laughs> somebody both, was on know, it. Both bikes were being used. <laughs> like, ah, I got to wait till, you know, till it's uh, available again. So, um, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, good memories there. Um, so what would you say to the older man or woman, not even older, just uh, any of our listeners really, who have all but given up on their personal fitness and health goals? Like they're just like, I'm just, I'm not an athlete. I've never had success. I don't like working out. You know, th- th- this was you not that long ago. It absolutely was. Like, what would you say to that person who, who maybe at least saw a Peloton commercial or is listening right now and they're like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe this is something f- I should try? You know, for me, what I have found is it has to be fun. Um, that's what keeps me coming back and meeting people on the bike, meeting, talk, like being able to high five people that I quote unquote know. I mean, I don't really know them because they're all virtual, right? But I know them because I see them every time I ride or every time I run. Um, that makes it fun for me. Having an instructor who like I'll take a, a milestone run or ride and getting a shout out, that pulls me in. That makes me want to come back. Um, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll explain a little bit more about that. Peloton has a uh, program on the bike called Power Zone, which is excellent for people who like to train, especially if they like to train outdoors and they're road riders. It's very, very structured and it's all about improving your power on the bike. It's wonderful. And I love it, but it's not fun because it's so structured that um, I it sucks all the fun out of it for me. And you have to do two or three or four rides to be able to see the 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 improvement over time and to really get the most out of it. And I found I was trying to do these challenges with my Peloton friends and I was getting so down on myself. Like it just pulled all the joy out of it for me. 
And don't get me wrong, some people, this is perfect for them. But for me, I found that like, I needed to give myself permission to go take other classes with my favorite instructors. And I found my joy again. I was really worried there for a minute that like, oh, no, I'm gonna lose all of this, this improvement that I found my love for working out. So I say to the people at home, find something fun, whether it's Peloton, whether it's walking outside with a, somebody that you enjoy talking to, um, or get them on the phone, take a walk while you're you have your headphones in. Um, um, or going to play tennis with somebody or uh, playing basketball. It does not need to be competitive and you do not need to be the best at anything. It's just moving and feeling good because the benefits you get from exercise are not just physical. The um, I tend to be a person who gets a little bit depressed, especially whenever it's the dark time of the year and it's winter and um Keeping that serotonin level up by exercising all the time, it's been a complete game changer for me. So that would be my advice. Don't don't worry about your long-term goals. Just move. Just move a little bit. Yeah, it does. I mean, it, obviously, it, it came up a little while ago in the conversation, but, you know, one impacts the other so greatly. I mean, why, why do you see people that seem to exercise more are in better moods and are happier people? it's it's there's a correlation there and it's scientifically proven you know when you get up and you're vertical and you're moving there's endorphins released there are things chemically happening in your body it's the way we are designed we are designed for movement and when our bodies are sitting idle especially day after day week after week we can fall into depression we can fall into more right we're in stressful uh, we're just feeling the stress of life more, the anxiety of life more. We're, we're unhappy. We're dissatisfied. And a lot of those feelings and thoughts can kind of dissipate or go away entirely when we start to really make movement, whatever that movement is, as you've said, it can be anything. When we incorporate movement into our daily living, everything improves. It really, truly does. And at any age, it doesn't matter if you're a teenager or 90 years old. I've seen people that I worked with face to, excuse me, face to face, that were in their middle late 80s, and were just they would get excited because they knew, like on a particular day, that was their workout day to come in and and visit with me, do something they knew was good for their body. It got them out of the house. It got them upright. It got them investing in themselves and being around others and having the social element and all of these things. I mean, it, exercise is, it's why when you think of a child and you think of somebody that's happy and moving around, we, it's children, right? Children cannot sit still for a darn yeah. second. And they don't think right? about it. They They're just do it. Moving, <laughs> and they don't think about it. It's just fun yeah. for them, right? It's not exercise. It's just activity and movement, which is part of what makes life worth living for them as, as they're young at that age. Well, we lose that when we get older, don't Absolutely. we? We just start sitting and, and not moving as much. And then we fall into these, uh, these crevices or these cra holes in life of, of, you know, of being up uh, miserable and depressed and sad and all these other, you know, emotions that aren't helping us uh, live out our best life. And a lot of that, as we've said, is, is fixed with exercise and with movement, which is so awesome. So total transformation. And, and we've seen that so many times in past episodes with past amazing guests like you who invested in, in exercise in their life and it led to all this other areas of growth in their life to, to network opportunities and people that they've come across and met and, and, and they're, they've maybe found their spouse, you know, I mean, I met my wife in a gym. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty there cool. There are people um, that have met in the Peloton so, community and moved across the country for each other when, and it's, and have now they're married. Like right. it's incredible. <laughs> that's right. Right. Cause it, off the bat, you know, you have this very strong compatibility. You love exercising in this community together. And it's like, well, what more do we have in exactly. common? You know, let's explore this. So it's pretty awesome. So what's a typical week of exercise look like for you? Like right now? Right now. So, um, I am in the process of working on my running speed. As I said, I am very slow when I run. Um, so I, I do, uh, I kind of been going back and forth between strength training and using, um, running my treadmill for running. So, um, on 
Mondays, I do a tonal. So I know we haven't really talked about tonal, but it is it is a machine that's all about strength training and it, it uses mag- electromagnetic strength to provide the weights. Um, so I do a program Monday, Wednesday, Friday on tonal and then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I run. And right now my running consists of Today is speed work. So I did a hit run this morning and uh, cause today is Tuesday. And then Thursday I do my mid length run. And on uh, Saturday I do my quote unquote long run with my overall goal being that I would like to run a marathon next year. That is my goal in 2024. <laughs> wow. How cool is that? That's excellent. You have three podcasts that you're part of all kind of talking about, you know, exercise, nutrition, well, you know, health on, on different levels. Uh, yes. it, the Met Pro Method is one of them right behind you, right? Uh, yes, that, that's yes. your whole thing. And then the tonal one that, that you have, right? And what's the name of that podcast again? That's called The Superset. The Superset. And then, of course, uh, the Clip Out uh, podcast, which is the, 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 the one that we referenced uh, earlier on, which is is fantastic. So, and this coming from somebody like yourself, where you said you, you were kind of the quiet, shy, kind of not, you know, and now you have like three podcasts going, which is a lot. Um, but obviously you have this strong uh, connection and this love and this passion for what you're doing and how it's helping other people. Uh, so you're, you're, you're kind of paying it forward, so to speak, you know, you're helping others to find, their passion uh, for exercise and wellness uh, like you did uh, some years back. So that's pretty awesome. I love it. I love it. So what's the future? What's the future look like you think for this uh, Peloton (laughs) experience? What, what do you, are you feeling like there's anything new on the horizon? For Peloton specifically or for, for me and my life with Peloton? Yeah. Or both. Okay. Well, um, you know, word on the street is that Peloton will be releasing a rower soon. Um, and uh, they have they have some other products in the pipeline, from what I understand. So, um, of course, uh, because I am a Peloton diehard fan, we might have to get a rower. I might have to try that out, uh, see how I like that, how I can fit that in. Um, I'm already neglecting my bike, so that could be dicey. Um, but then uh, Peloton, as far as the company, they uh, are going to be, they just reopened the studios kind of on a soft, limited basis. They have a studio in New York and one in London um, that you can actually take classes in, uh, in person, which is a ton of fun. So I, as far as what the future brings, I cannot wait to go back to New York City and have a big giant party with all of my Peloton friends again, because it is the best. Um, and uh, that is something I'm looking forward to. And then, um, Also, Tonal is on the other side of the country. They are out in California and kind of looking forward to being able to go out there and meet those folks as soon as it's been kind of crazy the last couple of years with COVID. So hoping to to someday go out there. And of course, I'm training to to do hopefully a marathon. I'm saying that kind of quietly because I'm I'm, I'm like on the fence. First, there's this uh, there's this big walk that they do in Big Sur. It's a 21 mile walk. And um a friend of mine uh, who is on the Clip Out podcast because she loves Peloton. Uh, she really um, she lives in California, and her name is Dr. Jen Mann. She's she's like a sports psychologist. She's very well known in the sports psychology world. Um, she was telling me that like maybe she can go straight to a marathon because I have expressed I'm concerned about that. So uh, she was telling me about that Big Sur has not only a marathon, but they have a 21 mile walk. So you can walk or you can jog, which is kind of my speed. And uh, you can do 21 miles and it's it takes place in April every year, but they only let a 1000 people in. So in a I know it's not very many people. So I'm hoping that uh, in April of next year, I'll be able to do that. And that will give me the confidence to do like a real in-person marathon for November of 2024. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Wow. Wow. Very cool. Well, yeah, at least you have realistic uh, goals in mind. I think, you know, (laughs) That's a huge undertaking, you know, a marathon. And for some people, just a half marathon would be a, a, a massive um, undertaking, you know, because maybe, that you know, to them, a 5K is like, you know, kind of a, a big deal. 
And so I would just say to anybody, like you just said, you know, just start with something, whether that's just like some kind of local event that's a, a one or three mile thing or a 5K or even a 10K. I mean, there's so many there's so much opportunity around us, uh, what, whatever communities that, that we're in, there's stuff happening everywhere, uh, yeah. whether you want to do something in person or virtually. Before I started this whole journey, I had no idea. Like, I, this is how out of the loop I was when it came to sports things. I had no idea that there were like running clubs and uh, and road rider clubs, and they would do these road rides together. They would do these runs. I had no idea any of that existed. I know it seems obvious to to anybody who knows about them, but but there's a lot of people who don't know that you can just sign up, and they don't they don't cost money. Like, you can just go and join one and, and like for a day and do a ride and see if it's something you like. And then if you do, you can always get involved with the actual club. It's, and, and that's a great way to um, enhance relationships and meet people. And th that might be all you need is just going outside to do something um, and finding new people that they can be your people. It doesn't have to be a Peloton or a Tonal or something like that. It can be anybody. Right. Right. It can be anybody. Exactly right. Depending on what you end up grabbing, gravitating to. But just pick something and go with it and give it a chance for a little while. And then, you know, if, if it's great, terrific. If, if you're not feeling it after so many weeks or months, then give something else a go. But uh, there's, there's something out there for everybody without question. You just kind of you just got to get going on with something. So um, so. Obviously, we want our listeners to be able to uh, find you and and uh, listen to your one of your many shows. But you said that <laughs> the best way for them to find you is really the clipout dot com. Is that correct? Yes, you can find anything about me there. There's a contact form if you wanted to contact me. But you can find out about the show. So uh, the clipout dot com is the best place to go. Absolutely. And I, I love it too. Looking just looking at all the the. Uh, information on the about page with you and and your husband tom and uh just get to know both of you a little bit obviously you you have uh hiking and camping that <laughs> that he like that you like as outdoor activities and and his uh, says he once he once watched tv with the windows open so yes. that was kind of his connection to the great outdoors <laughs> exactly yeah he is uh we are we are polar opposites in so many ways but it is it is fabulous and it's so funny because he has he's never exercised and those pictures we just got done this year we had to update the website because in the last year and a half he has uh, started using tonal he does not like cardio at all so talking about finding the thing that works for you cardio was not it for him but he started using tonal and he lost um between that and met pro lost 70 pounds in the last 18 months and he looks like a completely oh different person yeah it's really incredible How and he cool feels so that? much better <laughs> Of course. You're like, see, honey, I was I was trying to tell you for all these years now. You exactly. finally got going with something. And so that was life changing for him. That's a major, major transformation. Yeah. And, you know, he turned 50 last year. So it, like to your point about it's never too late to start something like that. It's that's a great example. Um, and he didn't. And he's one of those people that. I love the endorphins from cardio. He swears he does not get any endorphins from exercising. He does not enjoy it. He does not like anything about the process, but he loves the results. And so that's what keeps him coming back is like, oh, I really like that I feel stronger. Oh, I've lost all this weight and I now I don't snore as much or, you know, whatever. It's like he can't he can't get over how differently he feels. So that's what keeps him coming back. And so everybody has different motivations. <laughs> They're different whys. That's right. That's right. Well, that's terrific. I thank you for, for sharing that. And uh, uh, it's never too late for anybody. I mean, it's just a great sentiment. It really isn't. Um, and, and day one can be today. It can be tomorrow. But it's just about making that choice. It's a conscious choice that, that you make and that it can begin with a very small undertaking, a very small step in the direction of improving your health, improving your, your own fitness and and so thank you so much uh, for being uh, with us today, Crystal. I really enjoyed the conversation, and I had no idea I'd be talking about the old espresso bike <laughs> from the just... Punta Gorda Club. That, I mean, that was so fun to be able to just relive that, that quick memory of, of an old piece of, uh, of equipment from my back in the day. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate you having me on the show. It was a really great conversation. Yeah. 
Oh, good. Terrific. Yeah, I enjoyed it immensely. I hope all of you listeners did as well. Again, if you're a first-time listener of the Strong by Design podcast, thank you so much for listening today. And please uh, hit five stars or leave us a, a, a rating or a review at whatever platform you're listening to the show. We greatly appreciate that. And uh, you know, we'll be back next week, as always, on Wednesday when a new episode releases here on Strong by Design. It'll be another great conversation, as we always have here. We thank you so much, and God bless you. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you.